details disclosed in there. If you've got your camera on, that sort of thing, switch your camera off. Otherwise, it will be recorded. Um, if you disagree with it, any of the rest of it, um, please feel free to drop off and we'll make the recording available at a later stage. So, welcome back, Zach. Thank you. Um, welcome back, everybody, on, on the call. So, the numbers are building up there, so we'll kick off. And welcome, uh, Josh, who's joining us from Wellington, fresh from Vegas. So, appreciate you being on the call, buddy. And uh, Fiona, for uh, uh, one of our account managers on the call as well. So today, uh, normal run of events, uh, news, surface, uh, vulnerability, prizes, Q&A. So uh, news. So if you're into your abbreviations, DAP and GDAP, uh, this is something really important to partners. So I highly encourage you to jump on that call. The links, as always, are live in this uh, live PowerPoint. So click on them, bookmark them. Um, that next one kicks off on the 24th. So this is a weekly feedback into Microsoft about the granular delegated admin privileges, which is going to have a huge impact on the way that you service your customers. So uh, make sure you're up to speed on that. Um, we will be doing some more in depth stuff on it. As Zach has sort of like said, hey, look, we need to dive deeper into this. So we will do that once uh, Microsoft have finalized exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, down the bottom there, um, Heike's uh, webinar. Times aren't really suitable, but all the recordings are there. The reason I've got it is because she's got a couple of dogs as well that take part in the uh, webinar. So uh, having won the Dicadata Dr. Doolittle Prize last month, um, it's only my role to look after the pets. Um, we talked last week around having those uh, security conversations, or it might have been earlier. Um, interesting article in Forbes that popped up that one in five SMBs don't have any cybersecurity. And um, what they mean by cybersecurity there is just simply an AV on the endpoint, which is definitely not enough. Um, so it's higher than one in five. Um, so jump onto that article, print it out, and then you can um, present it to your customers and say, hey, look, you know, this is something that's ha happening. Um, talking of uh, things that are happening, worldwide. A uh, report from um, Microsoft on the events in Ukraine, which is really like the sandpit for attacks, uh, nation state um, actors, Nobelian, um, ravaging Ukraine and what Microsoft's doing to help defend there. Uh, this afternoon, IT professionals have a uh, webinar. Once again, you can click on the link and register. Um, you don't have to be a member um, on building the cybersecurity workforce and uh, I go go for all uh, that I've included right down the bottom is Security Insider, uh, which drops your emails and bits and pieces. Um, upcoming webinars, uh, hot off the press. This time may not be suitable for you. You'll notice it says May 25 and then down below May 24th. That's adjusted for New Zealand time. So four o'clock in the morning, if you can't sleep, um, feel free to get up and dig into in depth on Defender for Business because there's a lot of interest in that. A lot of people are seeing it as a good replacement for their incumbent AV solution and being able to extend it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those uh, replacements are coming when the um, existing incumbent AV falls over and the people get ransomware. So let's get ahead of the game, guys, and um, make sure that we are talking to our customers around Defender for Business and we're rolling it out. If your technical people need some more help on it, um, you can jump in and get the recording of these. These are with the product team out of Microsoft. They're responsible for Defender uh, for Business, uh, Defender for Endpoint as well. Um, and there's also some sales training uh, coming up on May the 27th, 4 a.m. our time. So um, today, uh, Rhonda has a previous engagement, so we're have the esteemed Josh Chivillifor, who may be familiar to most of you in Wellington or the lower North Island. So I'll throw across to you, Josh, and uh, congratulations on um, climbing the first rung of the property ladder yesterday. 
Oh, thank you very much, PC. I do appreciate that. Yep. Um, hi, guys. It's Josh here in Wellington. Um, today, I am your Rhonda Bathgate, so um, I'm going to be covering over your Surface promotions for the time being. Um, don't mind my eye bags because I haven't been sleeping very well because of trying to settle for my house. Yeah, it's just been crazy the past couple of days. Um, anyway, I'll jump ahead. Um, so with Surface, um, we are running a Surface promotion. Um, this Surface promotion um, that it's for a laptop studio. Um, it's an i5 16 gig 256 spec. Um, with this, you get an amazing bonus pack. You get um, all of those free items that you see on the screen there. You do get um, the three year extended next business day support on your laptop studio. You also get the Cypress Hero backpack, a Surface mobile mouse, and you also get a Plantronics headset. Um, so all of that at a value of $500, all free to you. Um, that laptop studio bundle is priced at $23.99. So that's an amazing buy, um, and I highly suggest that you um, go ahead and grab one of them if you're if you're interested in the new laptop studio, which is replacing the Book Three. So the Book Three is no longer available; it's, it's no longer a product that's going to be there from Microsoft. So yeah, make sure you jump on that and get the laptop studio. We do have 54 units available in stock at the moment. Cool. And if you haven't seen the um, new studio, um, jump on and do some searching. It's an amazing device. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. I, won't I was able to see it. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> and the next promotion that we're also running is with the um, Surface Pro 7 Pluses. So right now, all Surface Pro 7 Pluses are 20% off, and that promotion will run until the 29th of May. Um, so um, definitely jump on that promotion. Um, it's for all of the models in the Pro 7 range. Um, for every Pro 7 Plus that you do purchase uh, or you do sell to one of your customers, you are included into the draw um, where you could win a Xiaomi 3 electric scooter worth $799. So it's a great um, promotion that we're running for that. Not only do you get that 20% off of the Pro 7 device, but you do get a chance of winning one of those cool little zippy scooters. Yeah. I think Paul has one. Yeah, I've got yeah. one, but uh, I like what you did with the jump on this promo. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether you should be a market. <laughs> um, and then Paul, on to you for that one. Cool. So I'll just take control. Um, so we talked about this um, last week, I think, uh, with uh, the original Ronda. So there's a whole lot of video training sessions available on those links there. Um, I see Ellen, you're saying the link is not working for me. Um, not sure why that is. Um, if you hover over, it should be a hand, and then you just click, and it, it should go through there. But if you just jump into the um, lower one where it says I've highlighted accessing the learner site, you don't have to register, be a registered reseller for it. You can get some um, cool details on it. Uh, I'll flick the slide forward. Uh, so this is sort of the uh, content that's on there. There's a whole lot of videos. You can earn certificates, so you can add it to your certificate. Uh, a repertoire and stick it on your wall, um, course completions and those bits and pieces. The videos are pretty short. There are 10, 15 minutes and that's followed by a, a knowledge quiz to earn the um, certificate. Questions are, are reasonably hard, um, but you can have multiple guys at it. So it's a you know, normal sort of uh, multi-testing thing. Um, so back to you. Yep, I, and I can click the slides for you if you like. Oh uh, yeah, if you could do that, we don't have to take control. Yeah, so um, we are um, looking at the spotlight on Surface. So we do have a link to our Surface um, portal um, on our Dicker Data website. So that's the link there under the spotlight on Surface in the red button. If you click on that, it'll take you to our website where it'll uh, you'll be able to see our current promotions, our current events around Microsoft Surface, as well as our contact details with Rhonda and Mike, as well as myself, Janine, and also uh, Leah on our team. If you have any questions or need additional information on Surface. Um, but if you go to that link and you go into promotions, you're going to see that we also have three other promotions in place. So on the top left there, you'll see the bonus privacy screen. And so with every Surface Pro 7 Plus that you purchase, uh, we will include a one to one um, privacy screen that's valued at $130. So with that Pro 7, remember, you get the 20 percent off and you also get a bonus privacy screen as well. And you get an entry into um, our draw for that electric scooter. So that's um, one of the promotions that we're running. Um, the second one up top is a double uh, bonus pass to the movies. So this is for every Pro 8 device that you purchase um, through us. You um, are uh, you do win two passes to event cinemas um, for, for the movies. So you can either go see Downton Abbey or Doctor Strange, whichever suits your fancy. Or, or Top Gun. 
Oh, Maverick. Top Gun. Yep, oh, Top Gun yep. Maverick. Talking Surface. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're talking Surface. I think that's out next week. Um, I'll, I'll definitely see it. Um, yep. So that's with every Pro 8 device. Um, you get two bonus passes. We do still have 13 double passes left available. And back to that bonus privacy screen, we do have, um, we do have a bunch. We have about 33 privacy screens still in stock. So definitely get onto those those promotions. And then the last one on the bottom is to win a pair of Surface headphones too. And this is if you register um, for the Surface starter kit. So if you're not currently a Surface authorized reseller with Dicker Data and you are interested, definitely go ahead and um, click on that link to view the promotion and register your interest with us. And um, what that'll do is we'll put you into the draw. Um, and um, Mike, who is our Surface Product manager will definitely reach out and kind of explain the details around becoming an authorized reseller. What's a bit grid, um, the, the different promotions or the different um, uh, discounting levels that you can get with Surface around bit grid and deal registration. So definitely jump on that um, that link if you're not already a authorized reseller, and we'll put you into that draw. And, um, Abdul, I'll, I'll get uh, Rhonda to uh, flick you an email uh, with all the promos and, and bits and pieces. Um, this deck. I will put into the shared folder and I'll share the link to the shared folder um, at the end of the call. So if you're having any issues clicking on links, then um, feel free to dive in and use the, the uh, real deck. It, it may be that you're just using a web browser rather than um, using PowerPoint application. Um, so we'll, we'll oh, yeah. get that sorted. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for that, Zach. Um, yeah, Abdul, it's also on the on that Surface Spotlight link there under promotions. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Back to you. Thanks, JV. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, if you didn't know, JV just got back from Vegas where he was doing his Elvis impersonations um, on Saturday, was it? Saturday. Yeah, thank something. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the, the, the back sound of your eyes are also a little bit of cheat lag. <laughs> um, OK, so Microsoft uh, vulnerability management, and I've gone loose on the cartoons for this one because it's sort of like a, a bit of fun um, in security, making, making it sexy again. While we're talking about this, is here is um, the vulnerability graph from NIST uh, showing the rapid increase in number of uh, exploits against vulnerabilities in software. And if you think about it, there's thousands of lines of code in everything that we do. So there's always going to be someone who finds a vulnerability. Um, you can see so far in uh, 2022, um, it's starting to ramp up and we're only, what, five months in? Five, oh, four and a half months then. Um, so we can expect it to be a lot higher. Uh, the numbers are pretty close to 22,000. Um, to be exact, uh, 21,509. No, it's 957, actually. Oh, I put that wrong in my notes. I'm just trying to do it from memory. But um, that's why we need to start looking at once we've covered off uh, securing identity, because that's the new perimeter and zero trust. The other thing is how well do we trust um, our patching? And we all know that you've got to patch as soon as possible um, because as soon as Microsoft or any software vendor releases a patch, there's somebody out there reverse engineering it, finding what the vulnerability is and then exploiting it. So they, they go out in the wild. So what we need to be able to do is discover those vulnerabilities or things that we've misconfigured that are allowing people to get into our house, if you like. Um, and we need to do this in real time. We also need to be able to prioritize that because, you know, if we're looking at uh, pretty close to 22,000 vulnerabilities, what are important to us as a, a business or important to our customers and what do we need to be on top of? So we'll go through some of the uh, stuff that happens there. Real time discovery. So um, we used to put these all into an Excel spreadsheet, go, OK, yeah, we've got to patch this at this customer on this device, so on. The rapid uh, speed that these vulnerabilities are coming out, um, keeping that Excel spreadsheet up to date is not possible anymore. So we need to rely on the cloud and what's being reported in real time and coming back into us and then matching that against what we've actually got on our customer sites as far as devices and applications. And we've always got um, some user who's installing applications that we possibly don't know about. You know, it's not on our Excel spreadsheet. It's not one that we authorized. Um, what is happening with that application? Has it changed permissions? Has it gone from being a dating app to now grabbing all the personal details from, from your device? Um, we need to see what 
that configuration has changed in real time and be able to adjust and block that application if we, if we need to from a, a single interface. And we need to have a list of what our, our work schedule is and prioritize it. What is going to have the greatest benefit? What is out in the wild and being actively exploit, exploited um, today? Um, so you would have seen on a previous one, I, I showed a screenshot of the email I get through from my demo machine saying there's an active ex exploit on that one and it's critical. I think it was critical um, around my uh, one of my browsers that I had to uh, patch and update so I can push those things out to my um, devices uh, using my endpoint manager. Um, and what's emerging? Um, what are active breaches? What has been what is being exploited in my environment on my devices and raising those alerts so I can jump in there and stop it, kill it in its tracks before it, it ransomwares or um, steals all my highly sensitive data. And uh, remediation, you know, how do I go about doing this? Um, most partners don't have a dedicated security person, so what are the steps I, I take? And having that all documented in a knowledge base that's accessible through this uh, makes it a lot easier. It means that the help desk or the desktop support guys are fully up to speed and part of the security play. It's not just a, a separate thing. Um, and how that remediation is going, have I, I fixed that? So on and off. I'll show you some screenshots of this message. Let me move it on. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, build slides. So we talked about securing the front door via identity using uh, multi-factor authentication. Of, and of course, everybody has instituted that. If you haven't, um, pull your finger out and get on with it. What can also happen is if we safeguard that identity, um, malicious actors are going to look for another way in and vulnerabilities in software. Uh, if you look through that vulnerability list, you can see that it's it's widespread um, and hopefully uh, we'll have a demo later in the se uh, season um, <clears throat> from a colleague who uh, showed me how to exploit um, a Unify uh, CAM software by replacing a DLL and um, elevating privileges. So we need, in this case, we've got the RAM RAID, so we call the building inspector and we look for all the vulnerabilities in our, in our environment. So, you know, there's windows, there's, there's a back door. We need to sort of like safeguard those and, you know, those keys. Um, maybe somebody can just pr preview the lock, you know, put something in there and brute force it. So we recommend he recommends repairs and we get on and, and do the repairs on that. And that's where our vulnerability management comes into it. So my little wolf. Um, not Ziggy, Threat Analytics, if we go into here, we can actually um, filter and see what our vulnerabilities are. So this is just jumping into security um, Microsoft uh, portal. Uh, so if you go home security, you'll see there there's threat analytics and this tells me everything that's happening out in the wild. And if I focus that just down on my vulnerabilities, I can do this across phishing, ransomware um, or the activity group. So if I'm really interested in, in what uh, Nobelium um, flavor of the month, is doing, uh, I can just drill down there and see what their attacks are. And here on um, that, I can see that my threat analytics, I'm showing uh, 38, uh, I can't read this slide, it's too small for me there, but um, whoops, can I jump forward? No. Um, going to the vulnerability, so uh, if I go to my Defender tab or security.microsoft.com, uh, um, and then drill down to my vulnerability management, expand that out. Uh, we'll do a quick run through of that. So first off, dashboard. This has a score a little bit different to uh, your secure score. Um, the object here is to get as low as possible. Um, and it shows you the risk across your devices, um, applications, uh, networks, so on. Um, what my recommendations are, um, and this prioritized on the ones that I can do, that are going to have the greatest effect. And you'll see the number one on there is update Adobe Reader um, because it's a demo machine and I want a whole lot of vulnerabilities. I have a really old um, end of life Adobe Reader on there. And you can see that there's 364, I think, active exploits on that. Where it's got the read one means that it's out in the wild and people are actively using it. So I'm setting myself up for a, 
whole lot of grief there by having that vulnerable software. But you could use this in your customer to say, hey, look, you know, this um, secure communication tool that we have at the Reserve Bank of New Zealand hasn't been patched. There's an active exploit. We need to patch it now. Um, and that would save any grief and damage to uh, reputation. Here's the ones that um, I need to remediate or have been remediating. Um, so blocking uh, can, uh, PSEC and um, W, uh, I can't remember what it's called, um, which is one that Robert Crane talks about all the time. So there are ways of doing that rather than actually removing that software. And you can see that if I click on that, it actually shows me how to do it. Um, inventories, uh, this is pretty cool. It uh, drills down and it has a look to see what software I'm running on those devices. Um, you can see I've got VirtualBox in there. I've got Note Plus, uh, Notebook++, Plus Plus, an old version of that. So there's a few uh, vulnerabilities I need to look at there. Um, and my, my favorite reader sitting at the top. I can also look at the weaknesses. So this is taking the CVE numbers and matching them against what I have in my environment. Um, so I can refer to those ones. Um, event timeline, this is my remediations. Um, so you can see the one at the top there that I've remediated, uh, which was around Windows 11. So I just needed to do an update because there was a exploit on that uh, earlier this week or last week. Um, but I have 69 new vulnerabilities to look at and one exploitable vulnerability that I need to get on top of. Um, I did these screenshots earlier this week, so probably already done that. Well, hopefully I've already done it. Um, it's not just good enough to know what is on your device or on your customer's device. You need to know what's actually on their network. Um, particularly now with everybody working from home and, and jumping into uh, via a, a VPN into the corporate network. What happens if I was a hack, hacker and I dropped a a device in there and um, if you go to hack five there's a whole lot of leads and things that i can just plug into someone's network um, i need to have visibility across that and see what's actually coming in so how do i do that and this is a part of um, defender for endpoint that a lot of uh, partners don't know about is the network scanning capabilities of it how we get to that is if we jump right down the bottom and go to settings um, and then click on endpoints and once again, go right to the bottom. So understandable that people don't know where it is, um, but it is with your onboarding and offboarding for your uh, Defender script. You'll see a assessment jobs. And if I click on that network assessments, I can then download the uh, executable that I'm going to run on a device that I'm going to put into the network. And then when I configure this assessment job, I'm going to give it a range of IP addresses and it's going to be constantly scanning those IP addresses sending out pings and if I get a response it's then going to interrogate that device find what software is running on it what the device is um, whether it can be onboarded to Defender so if there's any new things that pop up um, it will go into my inventory or as I say here if you're the wolf the menu so here is uh, my dashboard and if I go to my device inventory you'll see that I've got a ton of computers and mobiles uh, showing on there. This is my home network, by the way, so don't um, go and exploit anything going there. I don't think there's anything too revealing about my habits. Um, but you'll see up the top there, five discovered devices that are not um, protected. Um, because I'm using my demo environment, I haven't enrolled all my home devices in this. They're en enrolled on a, another tenant, actually. Um, I can also go across and look at my network devices. So we talked about exploiting uh, some of the ubiquity gear. Um, I use ubiquity gear uh, for my access points, uh, for my security gateway and HPE uh, for my network switches. So they've all come up in there. I can even see what um, OS distribution they're using um, when it was last checked. Um, what is really cool is the IoT devices. So everything in my house, I'm not a bit of a, a, a geek, much to my wife's disgust, um, with doing stuff with home automation. So you can see all my um, voice controlled uh, things there. Um, Samsung smart things, everything that I've got in my environment. If something new pops up that I don't know about, then uh, it, it, it will highlight that I've got to worry about that. Uh, going back to my uh, computers and 
and um, mobile devices. My physical demo machine sound, stands out as being a um, big risk in my environment. I can drill down on it and see who's uh, logging in, uh, what's actually happening on that device. Um, so there's my uh, rubber duckies, my hacking devices, um, any sort of attacks against it, they're created alerts, and then I can roll these into the rest of it. And I'm going to have to speed up because I've got my five minute warning. Um, so there's so a new one. Um, I've been running Mimikatz against the uh, physical uh, demo device. And if you don't know what Mimikatz is, I refer you to uh, my blog in the uh, Dikadata Microsoft um, newsletter this, this month. Uh, so there you can sort of like see what, what it's been doing. It's trying to grab the um, details from memory on that machine and, and get, uh, elevate its uh, credentials. Breaking news. So uh, as of Monday, I think it was on May the 12th, uh, Microsoft announced this uh, Defender Vulnerability Management and Public Preview. So you can all go and grab it. Um, what it does, I will quickly go over this. Um, it's available if you go to your active users and scroll down there once you've signed up for the trial, enable it. Um, this is a bit of a dirty uh, tenant because I've previously had Defender for Endpoint P2 in here. Um, this Defender Vulnerability Management add-on is only available for P2. Um, even though I've turned P2 off on this tenant, I still have the capabilities of it. So how to get it? Um, Created the link there, so if you were able to click on on links, you can click on that one and download the uh, public preview, which is free for now. What it adds is network share analysis. Um, probably the biggest thing is the security baseline assessments across uh, Sys, and Microsoft. Um, it allows me to do consolidated inventories, which is pretty cool. So I'll just plug that one up so you can see it. Um, what that means, if we jump back into this once I've installed it. Um, I've got these baseline profiles that I can then go through and drill down and apply to my customer tenants. My inventories look really cool because now I have my applications as before, but I also have the browser extensions and certificates that are in my environment. So you see a whole lot there. Um, and just to wrap up summary, um, this should be your next area of uh, focus know that you do have threat and vulnerability management in real time um, modern day cloud-based threat and vulnerability management all wrapped into your defender for endpoint or defender for business so this is available for everybody that's running business premium if you're not running business premium i would be asking the question why the hell not because cost effective ways you know buying that combo um, gives you everything that you need and you can actually reduce the total cost of ownership for your customers by putting them on business premium. If you want to drill down, um, you know, jump back to the slides. There's a whole lot of stuff here about what you can do on it um, and details from Microsoft Docs. And one that my colleague in um, Australia um, brought up was that from that console, we can actually block those applications, the shadow IT, um, whether we have them enrolled or not to stop them in, um, working in our environment. So pretty much on time, and that's all from me. Upcoming episodes, oh, that's all for uh, Defender. Upcoming uh, episodes, so uh, next week, we're going to go deep into Surface on the technical and sales points on why you should be selling it to reduce that total cost of ownership. And that's things like zero touch, um, autopilot deployment, um, being able to manage those devices, seamless integration into Endpoint Manager um, in June. And then we'll uh, do our first guest, um, who will be uh, Joel talking about the opportunity around Dynamics Power Platform um, Business Central. So if you've thought that Dynamics was an area that you don't play in, it was a specialist um, partner thing, um, you know, pop along to that and you'll see some huge stuff. Unfortunately, I've had um, my uh, friends at the NSA cancel out from the 6th of July, but I do promise I'm working on somebody that will be even better. Um, and I, I mentioned him earlier in the call. So that's the upcoming schedule as it stands uh, today, that's subject to change. So um, prizes and uh, Josh, have you been humming away in the background to give away our apron and um, coffee mugs? Yes, I have. I have. And I will post it to the chat right now. Drum roll, please. 
Yep. We have uh, Mark Turnit and Terry Mary Lewis. Cool. So if you guys congratulations. Could, um, and Felix from last week, if you're on the call, uh, I didn't get an email for delivery addresses. So if you could um, send through where you want it delivered to to on point at tickerdata.co.nz and the link to that email is. Well, that slide went a bit nuts. It doesn't seem to be working very well in the live PowerPoint, but where you've got that blue on point, um, if you click on that, that's an uh, automatic link to uh, send you through that email. And as always, to subscribe to the newsletter, click there and um, we'll build up the list. Let's see if that slide does anything for me. No, OK, so that's a one off. I, I changed that at the last moment. So thanks again, guys, for all your uh, attendance and your attention. Really appreciate you being on the call. Um, I will stop the re recording now. So if anybody has any questions that you find embarrassing, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, come off mute and ask them. We have um, the uh, Zach on the call and what's your name? Uh, <laughs> Josh. <laughs>